Today I'm going to review and discuss the AirPods Pro, specifically in the context of how good they are when wearing while riding a motorcycle. Speaking of which, I don't need these in anymore. Now if you're already a subscriber to my channel, you probably know this is like the third video I've made about using headphones while riding. If you're not a subscriber, now's a good time. The first one talked about safety and legality of using headphones on a motorcycle. The second was about testing different styles and discussing the features you should look for in a set of headphones along with some recommendations. In that last video, I talked about how the normal AirPod design wasn't exactly ideal for using while riding. So the big question I had was if the AirPods Pro fixed all the issues I had with the AirPods to become my new go-to riding buds. You'll just have to watch the whole thing and find out. Or, you know, skip the last 90 seconds or whatever to find the conclusion. No, don't fucking do that. I've got a lot more than just some headphone review that's gonna be relevant for two months or whatever. I did a bunch of research on similar sets like the Galaxy Buds, Power Beats, Plug Phones, and all that shit because a bunch of people recommended sets that were similar to the AirPods, and I looked at all of them, and I got pretty concerned that a lot of you are running around blowing your eardrums out because you are not taking the proper precautions to protect your hearing with these things. Let's get into the deeper discussion of the things that people do with their phones while riding, technical details for how headsets reduce external noise, and wireless protocols used by these devices all kind of masked in an AirPods Pro review. Enjoy. I got a lot of feedback and recommendations from people for different headphones in my previous video. A lot of people recommended similar sets to the AirPods Pro, such as the Galaxy Buds, Bose Quiet Control, Power Beats, Plug Phones, Jaybirds, and a million other similar styles. I could have bought and tested them all, but the Patreon money isn't going to cover hundreds of dollars of headphones anytime soon. Young people from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part too. <laughs> They're doing their part. Are you? So instead, I tested the AirPods Pro, and I'll go ahead and give you all the details of how well they worked and issues I ran into, and then we're gonna use that information to theorycraft how well these other sets do. Quick recap of some of the key points from the last two videos on this topic. Any set of headphones or communication system you use in writing should have at least three minimum characteristics. They need to physically fit under your helmet and do so in a way that doesn't create pain, pressure, or discomfort in your ears or head. They need to be secure enough in your ears to not come loose or potentially fall out with just the normal jostling of the helmet. And in my opinion, the most important feature, thing that people seem to consider the least, they need to protect your hearing by eliminating at least some external wind, engine, and traffic noise so that you can prevent permanent damage to your hearing. The previous AirPods failed on all three of these accounts. They did a dog shit job of eliminating external noise, so you need to blast your music to overcome the already unsafe levels of external noise at speeds above 35 miles an hour. The in-ear design of the AirPods Pros corrected the first major issue with the AirPods, making it so that they actually stay in your ear when you put on your helmet and shake it around. They anchor to your head securely and have multiple tips in case the set that comes with it don't fit your ear holes. In fact, I couldn't get them out of my head no matter what I did. I rode with them in for 30 minutes or so at a time and didn't feel any pain or issues. But your helmet style and design may create different problems for you. Some commenters said they removed the pain or pressure by modifying the ear pad area and removing some material from their helmet, which I wouldn't recommend for the record, but you do you, boo. Headphones fitting under a helmet securely is the easy part. Literally, thousands of cheap sets of headphones will do that, albeit most aren't wireless like the AirPods Pro. And wireless is a neat feature, but not all wireless sets work or function on the same level. One advantage of the AirPods is that they use some cutting edge wireless tech. When we're talking about wireless technology and headphones, what we're really talking about is the various Bluetooth chipsets and protocols. Bluetooth is a radio frequency technology that's been around since 1989, but it's evolved over 30 years and the AirPods Pro uses the newer 5.0 standard. Bluetooth devices have always been a mixed bag. In theory, Bluetooth is an automagical way to wirelessly connect two devices together. The wireless devices don't need to be in line of sight of each other, and the connection distance is measured in tens of meters, not feet. Amazing. Amazing! The reality though is that there is a huge variance in the quality of antennas, chipsets, and protocols being used between devices that can create a dumpster fire of frustration that has left Bluetooth a bit of a mixed reputation. Lots of people can give stories of at least one Bluetooth device that wouldn't stay connected, might regularly impair itself, or have bouts of poor audio quality and distortion. The number one complaint I've seen about stuff like the Senna's is poor connection and audio quality. I'm sure much of which is caused by people using different models of varying ages and so have totally different wireless stacks. Well, 
Apple figured out how to fix all that Bluetooth shittiness by building their own custom wireless chipset called the W series chips in the previous AirPods and now the H series in the AirPods Pro. The AirPods Pro pairing is insanely quick, easy, and reliable. I never had connection issues at all, and the buds never lost sync with each other like some of the other sets I'll mention later. The H1 chip and Bluetooth 5.0 enable features like pulling one bud out to charge it while the other keeps playing, having multiple AirPods Pro connected to a single phone simultaneously so you could, if you wanted to, ride to the passenger who had their own set of AirPods Pro and be listening to the same music from one iPhone. Neato. But to do all this cool shit, you have to be running devices that also have Bluetooth 5.0 support, which any iPhone 8 and up does, but becomes a lot more of a crapshoot outside the Apple ecosystem. If your phone doesn't support Bluetooth 5.0, the AirPods will still connect and play sound, but will revert to the lowest con denominator of Bluetooth on your phone. This is why you can use the AirPods Pro on your piece of shit Android phone, but you'll be missing a lot of the reliability and ease of use you get when pairing them with iPhones. Calm down, calm down. I'm just kidding about Android phones being pieces of shit. We all know the only true master phone was the Nokia 3310, the phone that literally can't be killed. So the wireless on the AirPods Pro is awesome, but is wireless even a thing that you should care about? There's of course the convenience factor of not catching cables on stuff and running them under your jacket, but the real reason that people seem to want wireless is so that they can mount their phones to their handlebars and don't want to deal with the wire in between. When I first started writing, thousands of years ago, GPS, nav, music, text, emails, and video just weren't things you did with your phone. You could get a weatherproof GPS designed for hunting if you wanted and jury rig yourself a pretty mediocre navigation system on your handlebars, but most people, including me, didn't spend the money on that shit because it was hundreds of dollars and I was fucking poor in my 20s. Instead, I just got pretty good at planning trips with map quests and memorizing directions. Holy shit, I'm so old! When phone-based audio navigation became a thing circa 2012, it was a massive upgrade for me and it made it so I just needed to get the basic overview of how to get somewhere and then let the turn-by-turn -turn do the rest. This is how I've done navigation for years and the reason wireless earbuds are more of a nice to have than a requirement for me because I don't mind running a cable from the pocket my phone sits into my head. But now that everyone has a supercomputer in their pocket that can do all kinds of cool shit, some people want to have access to their phone screens as much as possible, including while they're writing. And if you want to put your phone on your handlebars, but still be able to hear music or audio navigation, well, that seems to be where most of the demand comes from for wireless headphones. A lot of comments and questions in my previous video seem to indicate a fair amount of you are doing the thing of putting your phone on your bars, and I'm not surprised because it seems like almost every one of these fucking motor vloggers is doing this shit. I'm sure the fact that some of these guys are laying her down in completely normal turning situations is not related. That Will Terrific guy wrecked his bike on purpose and there's not a goddamn thing any of you could say to me to convince me otherwise. Also, Epstein didn't kill himself. You know that I'm not safety guy. And I know that some people are more capable behind the handlebars than others, but as a blanket statement, I think you shouldn't do this. Your vision is by far the most important sense you have when riding. If you had a pie chart of all the senses and how necessary they were to safe riding, it would be like 90% vision, touch, smell, taste, hearing, and telekinesis would all divvy up that last 10%. Having your phone in your peripheral vision means that you're potentially getting notifications for texts, emails, phone calls, Facebook, Instagram, nudes app, and whatever else while riding, which is gonna draw your attention away from the road. Even if you do just use it for navigation and set up things like do not disturb while driving to silence all the rando notifications, I've also noticed people, including myself, end up staring at their phone instead of just listening to the directions and using street signs and visual indicators on the road to guide them when the phone is in their vision. If you think about it and decide that you don't need access to your phone or see the screen, then you can throw out all the complexities of needing expensive wireless earbuds entirely. Just one man's opinion. There are two techniques to reduce incoming and external noise, noise canceling and sound isolation. Noise canceling is a clever technical solution to the problem of external noise. Sound is a pressure wave flying through the air caused by vibrations from the things around us, which hits our eardrums and then is interpreted by our brain as sound. No, I didn't know all that off the top of my head, and yeah, I did watch an explanation designed for children to refresh my memory on the specifics. Fuck you for judging me. Noise canceling headphones use a microphone to sample the sound waves around you, then emits the opposite sound, which when combined with external sound waves, Ways, cancels them out, creating the net effect of silence. In the real world, how will headphones cancel noises based on a lot of factors. The sensitivity of the microphone and the ability to interpret external sounds, the speaker drivers in the earphones ability to reproduce the opposite sound waves, and of course, the software algorithms written by the manufacturer to match those external sounds. 
Now, the alternative to noise canceling is a very low-tech solution called sound isolation, which is just various methods of preventing sound energy from passing into your ear in the first place. As an example, I'm guessing you are familiar with the incredibly common sound isolation technology used for literally centuries, earplugs. The headphones I talked about in the previous video that I use are something like the Shure SE series because they block out a significant amount of external sounds with their foam earbuds the same way that earplugs do, allowing me to play my audio at safe volumes, with the only side of those being that I can't hear shit outside of my headphones. That leads us to the most important question of this video. How good is the AirPods Pro noise canceling and sound isolation? And the answer is, fuck, it's probably not good enough to use while riding a motorcycle. When I'm wearing them in normal places, say walking downtown Seattle, there are cars and construction and people talking. They take the loud city sounds and turn it into a dull whisper. It's still there. I can still hear it in the background, but I don't have to crank the volume to hear my music and understand the voices in my podcast. These external sounds are mostly in the 85 to 100 decibel range. Sitting on my bike at idle, I could already tell we were going to have a problem. The AirPods Pro support a feature called Hey Siri, where you can give your phone commands to do stuff like call people, skip songs, read your messages, and more. Hey Siri, if God doesn't exist, how should we build our ethics so that we can have a successful society? Also, why didn't daddy come home? I tested it in my living room and it worked great. So I was stoked to jump on a bike and start activating calls via voice. But the moment I turned the engine over, Siri couldn't hear me anymore, no matter how loud they yelled at it. So that was disappointing, but not a deal breaker. Forgetting about all that voice control stuff, I started riding. And initially, up to about 6,000 RPMs, things were working well, and I was feeling better about the AirPods' performance. But as soon as I started to open it up, getting to highway speeds, I began to hear cracking, hissing, and bleeding in of external noise and wind gin sounds. What seemed to start happening was that the microphones listening to the external noise could only really handle sounds up to a specific volume level. I'm not sure the specific reason why they were shutting down or feeding back. Maybe the microphone on the outside can only accept volume volumes at a specific level, or maybe the algorithm couldn't handle the frequencies, or the internal drivers couldn't replicate the sounds at the right level, but it sounded fucking terrible. So instead I just disabled the noise cancelling features and tried using them as regular ass earbuds, just to see if they had enough sound isolation from being deep in my ears. But that was no better than some shitty $20 earbuds. I had to blast my music to hear anything, and even then it was all drowned out by my engine at highway speeds. I took some imprecise measurements using the same desk meter app I used back in my first video, and my engine got up to about 117 decibels, which is pretty close to the volume of an ambulance siren between my legs, and what OSHA would categorize as really fucking loud. This is why I'm really concerned for a lot of you that recommended a variety of other sets of earbuds that are using plastic buds or noise canceling technology. I find it very hard to believe all these different sets of buds are canceling 30 plus decibels of external noise. For example, Galaxy Buds are similar in design to the AirPods Pro, in the sense that they secure themselves inside the earlobe, but have no noise canceling. So if you're relying on the little sound isolation you can get from these plastic shit buds, you're going to have a problem. Some of your recommendations did advertise noise canceling, like the Bose Quiet and Sony WF-1000s, but I'm insanely dubious of the claim that any of these will be much better than the AirPods Pro and avoid the same external noise bleed and inability to cancel out louder sounds. The Shures that I use come with plastic buds that are absolutely terrible at stopping external sound, but the memory style foam is a godsend for this. Foam is not the only material that can do this, as brands like the Plug Phones developed this proprietary thermoplastic with the goal of reducing external sounds. It's possible that I or my bike are the outlier, and maybe other people's riding conditions don't create the same levels of sound. If you have an R3 or are using like a stock exhaust system, maybe your helmet profile is more aerodynamic than my Arai, or your position on the bike suppresses some of the noise from coming to your ears, the AirPods Pro and other sets might be totally able to handle your needs. But I think that's not most riders, and more often than not, people just aren't vetting the sound levels that they're exposing them to while riding with these sets. The heuristic I would give you as a general rule to determine if the headphones that you're using are doing a good enough job to protect your hearing is to put them on off your bike, set the audio level to a comfortable volume that you can hear well, then jump on your bike and see if you can hear them just as well at that volume. If you have to increase your sound levels at all, you might be in a danger zone where it's compromising your hearing over long-term exposure, and you're better off considering a pair of headphones that advertise sound isolation techniques and materials. All right, let me stop blueballing you and give you a final wrap up. The AirPods Pro might be a good choice for your riding if your bike isn't too loud, 
your helmet blocks most of the external noise, and you are okay with some distortion and feedback from the microphone picking up loud sounds and rubbing against the insides of your helmet. Personally, I reverted to using my Shures after forcing myself to use the AirPods Pro for a full week. And let's just be totally real, if you're cool with shelling out 250 bucks for the AirPods Pro, then buying two nice sets of headphones, one for being on and one for being off your motorcycle, probably isn't gonna break your bank. And just because it's easy enough to mention here, off the bike, the AirPods Pro are great. I fucking love them. If you're gonna get yourself a pair of AirPods, I really recommend you shout the extra dosh for the pros because the noise canceling and Hey Siri activation is worth the extra $80 if you're already spending 170. And they're a great all around set of headphones. This is probably the last video I'll ever make on the topic of headphones and writing because I don't think there's a video worth of discussion left to ring out of it. So let me close by adding that I'm as guilty of anyone for having a bias towards looking for the slick, high-tech solution to my problems. But sometimes we can get too wrapped up in looking for the clever solution that we forget what our priorities should really be. Okay, I promise this is the last video on headphones I'm gonna make for at least a year or two. The previous headphone videos were pretty popular and because I'm such a huge Apple shell, people were asking for my opinion about the AirPods Pro and had questions and opinions about similar sets that I felt I needed to address. Also, I'm doing one of those kind of larger video projects that I do sometimes where it takes a lot of time and effort to research based on this poll I did recently. So I didn't want to go like three or four months without posting a video again. I was gonna buy these fuckers anyway, so may as well monetize it. If you're watching this right now, then you either made it through the whole video without being too put off by my tangents and swearing, or you did the thing I told you fuckers not to do, which is to skip to the end. Either way, you cared enough about this video to get here, so you are obligated by the mutual reciprocity code of YouTube to like, subscribe, and check me out on Patreon. Until next time, which is probably gonna be a little while, so calm your tits, ride fast, and take chances. Creates, I can't do it. I can't focus, I can't read and do the hand shit, which I didn't have planned anyway. Fuck it, I'm gonna show a video. Amazing! Oh, that's, I shouldn't do that. I'm just kidding about Android phones. iPhones are also pieces of shit. Really, the Motorola Razr is the only good phone. They sold that phone for like 15 fucking years. They still probably sell it at Verizon stores.